Hey, welcome to the unboxing of Merchant's Cove. This is one I've, again, like a lot of the games I've got on my shelf, haven't got round to even opening up yet to have a look. So it's a bit of an older game, maybe, I don't know, six months to a year now. Let's have a look at it. So Merchant's Cove, this is from the Kickstarter. Uh, it is probably the version, again, I haven't looked it up, uh, that has every component in it. Uh, I do like to go to the completionist level, whatever that is, all in, etc. But um, I love the detail on uh, the, the cover here. You can see it's still brand new and shrink at the moment. Uh, and I can see just reflected through that at my angle anyway, it has that uh, matte linen finish on it. But uh, look at the detail that, that we've got in there. Um, it's just, just gorgeous artwork. It's beautiful. A um, lot of time and effort has gone into that, you know. Over here, we see a person on a balcony, so lots of little details. I love when artists do that. Uh, it's just a, a brilliant uh, touch, which we all love to have on our games. Look, look, let's look at the underside. We can see here they say 60 to 90 minutes, one to four players, um, age 14 and above. So quite simplistic, uh, but nicely decorate, decorative around the edges. Moving on, exactly the same there. More of the same, so all sides are the same. Let's look at the base now. We can see there the, the gameplay, the layout, how it is. It is an asymmetric game, so each of the player boards has different abilities slash powers, whatever you'd want to call them there. Some nice minis in there. Uh, and for those of you who have been following along, playing along at home, uh, I have found someone to paint these up, so I think I will definitely do that with these minis. Uh, maybe one for each player. I can definitely see five that are that are there, three on that three here and two over here. So that looks good. We've got our boats, uh, components, a little bit of a blurb there. You can see that is uh, coming away at the moment, but it isn't scratched. It's just come away for some reason. I'm not too sure why that is. Let's open it up. Got my trusty new knife. Down the side there, down the other side. And already I can sort of see just, uh, this is, as I said, the, the Kickstarter edition. Uh, with, uh, you know, the lot, uh, the works as it were, uh, in burger ter terminology, old burger terminology anyway. So I can already see, and as I throw that onto the floor, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So it's got a few more things in it. I hope that it packs away nicely. Let's bring the top up. Up it comes, flipping it over. Normal board on the inside. They haven't done any, done any more artwork there. That's fine. Put that over to one side. Now, let's see, like I said, this is brand new and shrink, first time. This is a genuine unboxing, folks. So, we've got, uh, again, I love this when they do that, make my life easier so I don't have to use the trusty knife. I'll put that out of view there. So, this first bits and pieces, bits and bobs, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? So, I'll slide all of that out in one. Put that on top so as not to get confused. We've got this punch board to start off with and uh, that looks as though, oh, hold on, one, two. So they are double-sided, but they're different on uh, each side, although they are repeated. So looking at the one in the top left there, we've got those going to that two in the sack. Here we've got an X and we flip it over uh, where you can see there that's uh, sort of repeated-ish same as that there so they're double-sided and they are punchable the punch outable you can always punch them i guess but you can punch them out um, and it looks like they're one long piece i'm just going to bring that one out i might as well do them all now that I'm, i've done that you can see there uh, and we can get a feel for the the type of card which is there so that can go over there so we've got these and if i flip that over there we go. Uh, flip this one over. There we go. Flip that one over. You can see the other side. And our final one here, like that. So four of those, uh, I'm guessing one for each player, maybe. I'm not too sure. We have Oh, this looks interesting. Ah, okay, so as I said, it's asymmetric. So we have the captain. Uh, it looks like a bit of a rule book or how to play the captain uh, for the person who gets the captain. I like that they've got these individually. It's not all in the, in the one rule book. It means the player can have these on hand and next to them. 
and they can look at exactly what they need to do. And it's just an easy uh, fold out. So that's the captain. Here we have the blacksmith. Again, easy fold out, the layout shows you the board. And again, we see this thing which we just punched out at the top there. Uh, we get dice, we get all sorts of bits and pieces. And at the back, we've got the alchemist. And the boards, you know, they're all unique. And I like that as well. So that's the alchemist. And then we have the peddler. And they've changed it out. They put the, the peddler up the top there. Uh, this is oh, this is solo mode, that's why it's different in terms of, of the front look. Uh, we'll put that over to that side. And the chronomancer deals with time, obviously. You can see that there. So that's really good. I'll now put the solo mode on top of those. We now have uh, the alchemist, the captain. Why do we have these? We've got... Here we go. So the alchemist. So these are these are uh, got sort of two spots. Here we've got alchemist and captain. Nothing on the reverse side. We have the chronomancer and the blacksmith. And here we have uh, again. Not sure what these are for, but they're here, and that's why we're here to have a look at them to see what is in the box. So we've got base game six, base game boat six. Secret Stash Boats 3, Rock Rose Gems, Merchant Banners and Standees, and Faction Leader Meeples. So again, okay, I'll show you this one just up close. Scroll through a little quicker than I probably should. So that's that one. Let's have a look at this one here. We've got Place for Adventure Meeples, Adventurer Meeples, Corruption Cards. Uh, I think this looks like how you're supposed to put the box away. That's what this, this one definitely looks like. So I'm going to assume that's what these are. These are cards to show you how to put things away in the box later on. Yes, I think that's what they are. You can see here, put the dice down here. It looks like swords that you're making and axes and other things. The chronomance has got that paraphernalia. Okay, so that's what those are to help you put things away. Let's have a look at this fold-out board. Uh, I love the fact it's been cut into um, a unique shape. Let's do it that way. So come back and we see there, so I'll scroll that up. We've got a counter around the outside. An island here, uh, harbors here for boats to come in. We've got cards that we can place here. Um, and different time costs. And I think this is all about time uh, is, is this game in terms of when you do an action, you use up time and that goes around here on this time scale at the bottom. So it's dark, oh, on the other side, it is blank. No, it isn't, not quite. It's got a nice picture on it. Let's flip that over, bring that back into view. So that's what we've got there, this, this nice artwork of uh, Merchant's Cove, and there you can see Merchant's Cove over on the west coast of what we have here. We've got a Dwarven Realm, Halfling Realm, Trobbit and Green Elf Realm, Human Realm. So plenty of room for expansions, I'm guessing there, uh, with that nice map in play. Good, good feel to the card that we've got here. I'm liking it. Let's see if I can fold this up. Uh, feels very strong and sturdy, very thick. I like it. Now we seem to have playboards and they are um, dual layered on the reverse side. We can see icons and I'm going to assume there's a different icon. Yes, there is for each of the players and you can see there the shapes of the board are unique. Um, there is that inset so uh, things aren't going to roll out at least in this middle bit on this board. Now let's have a look just uh, at this board. I'll bring it up close. You can see some of the artwork, the detail that's there. Again, a nice thick size board. You can see there the recess uh, to keep things in there. There aren't any recesses on the sides here. So I'm assuming this is the only place uh, where we need that recess. Looking at this board, we've got plenty of uh, busyness going on here with recessed areas here, obviously for dice. 
uh, which this player uses. And look at the anvil there. Obviously, this one is the blacksmith. On the reverse side, you can see that nice picture there. You can see that the merchant's cut cove just in the background there lightly with people walking around. That might actually match up to the, the box cover artwork. No recesses on this board, but you can see here we've got places for cards, uh, maybe for dice, I'm not too sure, and, and other bits and pieces around. We've got uh, ships down the bottom there. So there's that one, and then we have this one here. It's got recesses for what looks like boats here. And uh, again, just I love the, how the colour pops, you know, and it, it's a very evocative artwork there. A um, bit of a, a cove in there as well. So that sort of bright colour always keeps me engaged in a game as well. Little dots here can see that uh, recess down the bottom here for this player. This is probably the alchemist, I'm thinking, with the, um, the jars and the bottles that are going around. Bit of a recess there and at the top there as well. Lots of stuff, lots of replayability. If you like playing in your group or yourself, you want to play the different... Um, I was going to say factions, players, it's not really, what is it? It's just like um, these things, the chronomancer, the blacksmith, the different ways that you can play as, as different beings uh, in this game. So here we have quite an intricate uh, uh, table to show you about uh, 3D punch board assembly instruction for the boats and for the sail shelves for each alchemist, blacksmith, captain, chronomancer, and there's an alchemist decanter here as well. Let's pick this one up, turn it over, nothing on the B side. This is uh, boat sail shelves again, so there's two of them for some reason. Might just be an accident. Here we have the big rule book, Merchant's Cove. Glossy, it's a nice glossy one, it feels nice, it's, it's good quality production. Same picture that we saw on the front cover, the artwork there, but you can get your magnifying glass out, look at all the, the lovely detail and the things that the artist put in there uh, for us to look at. You can see there, Welcome to Merchant's Cove, how to play the game, how to set it up. Pretty stock standard stuff these days. This is a larger format book, slightly bigger than A4 obviously. We keep going, clean up phase, final scoring, um, common actions that you do. A bit of an appendix there, which tells you uh, quite simply some of the, I guess, the actions, what the interpretations of those symbols are as well. And on the, on the back, a game overview. So it looks as though there probably isn't going to be, other than each player's individual um, little booklet, uh, a little player card that goes with it for each player. And probably, Fair enough, given that it is asymmetric. Let's have a look at these pieces. There'll be a place for all these as well. So I'll put that over that side and look at these. These are a nice wooden. You can see the thickness of them there. And we've got time, the hourglass for each, and a few sort of sack sort of icons there as well. So they possibly represent or colours for each of the um, different people that you can play in this game. I don't know for certain, but they are nice and you can hear that. They make a very satisfying sound in your hand. They can go over there. We have two bags, so maybe for two different players. Uh, we've got some boats, we've got some symbol there. Nice sort of felt finish there. Drawstring seems to work okay. That's not tied up on that side. It would be nice if they was tied up on both sides. It's obviously come undone because this one is tied on both sides, but this one has come undone. So going to have to tie that side up. Something for the manufacturer to look at for their next campaign. We have, looks like standee tokens. Could be for people, could be for the meeple, could be for the boats. Again, not sure. It's like really, it's been so long since I even looked at this campaign, but you can see they're good quality plastic, see-through resin plastic, and you just put your standees in there. Lots and lots of those. So it should be enough for everything that's supplied in the game there. We have here 
some red, I'm going to call them gems. I don't think they'll be the potions, but look like red gems, maybe trading gems. Some black gems as well in there. They have a good feel in the hand. They're plastic. Uh, obviously, the red one's a little bit more uh, translucent than the dark ones. And there are, put that one down there. One, two, three. There are four dark ones, so enough one for each player, I assume, but it might not be that way. We've got all our places, and we saw before um, how these work with each of um, the uh, trades. I'm going to call them trades now. That, that, that there are, or merchants. Let's call them merchants because it's Merchant's Cove. The merchants that you get, one of they'll. They showed us before how to put the stuff away for each merchant. More punch board stuff. So this is where the thickness of the box can be reduced by punching these out and putting them in these trays appropriately. Open that one up. That's just uh, some sticky tape on the outside. Won't need that anymore. So this, I don't know how how this relates to each of the merchants, that are the playable merchants. We definitely have boats there. That one's just fallen out because uh, it's a bit loose. That's okay. It's, these are to be, to be punched out anyway. But you can see there a whole lot of stuff there and uh, double-sided as well. Very good stuff. This one's falling fallen out in my hand. Let's bring that one up close. So... Slot, not quite it's different on both sides, but it is double side. You can see at the top there one hourglass one green thing down the bottom Flip it over the hourglass another hourglass has magically appeared above uh, The right hand side above that green thing. So let's just have a closer look at just this side here and then the other side of this punch board Over there we have some boats and we saw how to put these boats together that was explained on a white large white piece of paper flip that over brown red sort of white boat look at that I love love the little artwork there to put on on the boat somewhere at the at the head of the boat no doubt that's good uh, this one fell out let's look at this one so this one looks like it folds around I'm not going to do too much there and these punch out for things to be folded in there, possibly those ends in there somehow. Uh, and let's look at where this came from in this punch board here, turning it over. So we've got some, what, a six and a couple of eights there. Same on both sides for those. Some more boats, three more boats. Actually, sort of potions on that side for the alchemist. And then some other thing here. Let's turn it around that way, I think. And I'll flip that over so you can see the other side. Nice. Okay, now we have, here are the models that we saw before. Let's see if I can get them out without them falling all over the place. Look at those. Uh, we have four on the top row, one on the bottom row, and some model ships at the bottom there. Bring one of those out so we can see that just by itself. Again, nice. It's not overly detailed. Um, I mean, the hat doesn't have a lot of detail on it, but it, that could be purposeful as well. But still, very nice little model. You can see here this alchemist model uh, with its potions uh, all about the place. Uh, blacksmith over there with an anvil, you can see. And uh, another thing there with the boats there. So that looks good. That'll be great painted up. We have our cards. I'll get into those a bit later. Let's go through these meeples. So meeples for each player and their color. They've been screen printed and they are wooden. You can see there. Let's bring them out. Lots of meeply goodness. I'll keep those back. Actually, Try and bring out one of each colour. So we've got a red, a green, a blue, a yellow, and a dark or grey one. I'll call that one there. I think those are the only colours that are there. They all look the same to me as I'm flipping them back. 
in terms of each color has the same screen print but what we're going to do is have a look at the screen print of each different color bring them up close put my hand side on I won't worry oh so we'll worry about bringing them up so they all look the same way up so those are the, the meeples that you get and if I flip them over they are the same on both sides just have a look at that there they are the same on both sides I won't I'll oh, flip them over just to absolutely make sure they are the same on each side there we go so those are the, the meeples quite good thickness there that you can see there for those as well Put those back there, seal that up. Nice quality Ziploc bag. We have down this side, uh, for some reason that comes apart, even though it doesn't look like it's got something to the game, it does come apart for some reason, but so I'll keep that. We have a rotating wheel, nice, like that, and it's already assembled, yay. Quite often they don't come assembled, but that, that was smart thinking. They put that down that way so it wouldn't get damaged. I like that. We have all the dice here. Uh, I can see the colors. Looks like two for each color, and we have four black dice. Just normal dice, normal plastic dice. I won't bother about bringing those out. We have, looks like alchemist potion-y things. I like, like the way that they inside these, you can see they've, they've left the bubbles inside, which actually gives it that nice sort of look to it, as though it, it is a potion rather than just a coloured ball. So very well thought out there. Put those back. That over there. We have some more boxes to put trays, sorry, inserts, tray inserts to put things away nice and neatly. It would be nice if they had something on top of them, that way when you store the box, uh, one way and there are some nice little protectors in the corner That's what was actually keeping the box up a little bit. don't know if I'll keep them in or not I'll keep them in for now. So you can see corner protectors there. That was I think predominantly what was keeping the box up a little bit because they do they are raised a little bit You can see there they come up Okay, so let's look at some of these cards now Let's look at this lot. It's a very small deck here and in this pack of cards, put that at the top there, we have Dragon Island Festival. So maybe this is an expansion that came with it. It says more modules like this can be found in a secret stash expansion. So you can see there some more cards uh, for this expansion. Let's have a look at these uh, on the back. They have a similar sort of uh, iconography. Let's have a look. see those icons on the back there. And those icons on the back of those cards. So looking at these, we've got, there's one, there's another, and a third. And then we have these with that back. Alchemist, blacksmith. We can see the symbols there for each, which is nice. Captain, I remember that one. I can't remember what that one was. Chronomancer, I think. So that's nice to see those cards there. They can just go up the top there. And finally, we have these cards. I will need to gently open these. And I've got a new technique now, so hopefully I'm not going to cut into the cards. I'm a little bit more careful, just lifting and sliding up like that. Trying not to draw blood at the same time, because that would really defeat the purpose of opening the, this plastic this way. Trying not to ruin the cards. So I put my nice knife over there. Let's open these up and we can see the backs here. They have this skull motif. So that's that lot there. Quite a few of them. Then we have, oh, we've gone out from the skull motif, which entered somewhere. We got a nice hat with two skulls on it now. And then a crown with two skulls. A harp or yeah, harp with two skulls, a lyre maybe, a axe with two skulls at the top there. Then we have those cards. Let's put those there. 
Now, the backs of these cards, some sort of merchant, disgruntled merchant, you can see that there. And they stop there, so that's a separate set. And then we have uh, lanterns there to guide the way. Let's have a look at the lanterns first of all. We'll go through these, just flick through them quickly. Again, I just want to show you all the cards. You can work it out. This again, just so that you can see the variety that's in there. You'll be able to see if they're repeated or not. And these all have a nice linen finish. I don't know if you can see that linen finish that's there, that little crisscross hatching. Uh, nice feel to these cards. So that's done for those with the lantern on the back. Let's look at these with the merchants on the back, or the merchant on the back. Flip that over. I get a little bit of repetition, two of those, two of those, two of those, two, so doing things in twos at the moment. So these might be the people you deal with and what they need. Again, just a guess, I don't know for certain. Also green, yellow, blue, red colours coming through. You can see there green of the, the lyre. We've got some cross swords. We've got a skull there. Yellow down the bottom. I have no idea what it means. I like the artwork on this. That strike struck me. Look at that. Very cute, cartoonish, very fun. The game will obviously have that fun feel to it and uh, the artwork will add to that element of fun as well. For those of you who uh, like the very immersive uh, gameplay, which you love, which is what I love. I, I love being immersed in the game world, the story world. Okay, let's flip these over. Okay, so these all have one look on the back and uh, I guess you flip them over to that side then to find out what is on the reverse side so they'll be shuffled together no doubt we've already seen the other side of these cards so it looks like all of these will have yet yeah, they all have that look to them and that will be face down and then you'll flip them over and you'll reveal something which will mean something in the game and that looks like that's everything that we have in Merchant's Cove. So as I said, this was a Kickstarter edition. Thank you very much for joining me in this unboxing. Um, have fun with all your games. As usual, hit that like, subscribe, um, notification button as well, the bell icon if you want to see more unboxings, to see what's in games, that, which might help you decide whether to buy them or not, to play them, to use them in your group if they appeal to you or not. Have fun gaming. I'm Lamond signing off. Thank you for joining me.